Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the M53 M55, the Tier 9 American SPG. It's on the southwest spawn of Arctic region under the command of Clicker. Game on. Three marks of excellence on the barrel. Clicker's played this one quite a lot and, well, he's not afraid to actually knock down trees and shit that will actually tell people where he is. Yes, I don't recommend doing that. It's not a good idea. You never know who might be looking. Although he's generally safe at the start of a game to actually uh, do that because the enemy RT is probably moving to find a position to fire from. And so uh, they're not going to be looking straight away unless, of course, they're rather sneaky and they do know that that's the moment to actually have a look and get a clue as to where the enemy is. He decided not to go for the scorpion. And um, he's not going after that P44 Pant uh, Pantera either. Um, I think he's actually looking for an enemy tank to pop up in the north. Yep, he's definitely looking in the north area. Oh, there's a Patriot. Okay, now can you get a shot on that guy? Might be able to. Oh, I think he was waiting for that guy to back up just a little bit more. And he didn't. But down in the south, we've got an Object 705 and an Emil 2. Okay, he's got an 8-inch howitzer capable of doing 900 alpha. Used to be able to do 1,050 until Wargaming nerfed it. And it'll penetrate 52 millimeters of armor. So it's quite a lot of armor. And of course, remember the shells coming in from above, so it will get the top armor of some of these tanks. So it can pen some of them if it hits in the right spot. Rounds out on the 705. Well, he immediately looks towards the north because nothing appeared down in the south. You can see the Emil sitting on the ridge line trying to use his 12 degrees of gun depression. And so I think Clicker's going to use that against him actually. But no, changes his mind, goes back up north again. Of course, the vehicle has to turn, which means he gets reticule bloom. A Charfew Tier 4 has fairly thin armor, so if you can get around into that guy, that should certainly help. Rounds out. Go for the Patriot. Direct hit. 418, non-penetrating shots, low roll. The standard reload for this RT is 40.27 seconds. And we can see that Clicker's got 35.11. He's not using premium consumables. Instead, he's using 100 octane fuel to speed up the uh, engine. Gives him better traverse speed as well. Personally, I prefer the uh, Coca-Cola. The crate of Coca-Cola really does speed up the reload, increases the accuracy. Okay, it's got a Barask and the Quartz Panzer. Rounds out the Barask. Direct hit! 329, that's a nice hit. Changing position quite a lot there. Yeah, the Barask certainly didn't like that, and he's still stunned. Didn't use his first aid kit. Okay, a couple of enemy tanks over on the south side. There's an LT-432 doing some spotting. Looks like he's going to try and put a round in on this side of the map now. He's dialing in on the uh, Object 252U. And looks like he's going to get the E-75. Fires the round in. Oh! E-75 did the right thing actually to hug the rock. Because the shell overshot him and landed in the water. We're not doing so well in this game because we're three down on the enemy. Lost about uh, 3,000 hit points as well. Okay, we're just having a quick look at the Pantera there to see 
He was holding his right hand mouse button down so he could hold the aim on the spot. He goes for the team 103 instead. Direct hit. 416. Again, non penetrating shots. Now, it might be a good idea to actually fire at the north at the moment, even though we can't see the enemies there. Our guys are having difficulty trying to get through in the north pass, so that might be a good option. But instead, he's going to go for the south. He five, fires the round in and lands it in front of him for 263 from a splash. As those of, you, those of you who may know, the M53, M55 was based on the M47 pattern tank, but it's a, a tank that's in reverse because the engine's at the front, not at the rear. So basically just took a pattern tank, turned it around, removed the turret, put, a, put the howitzer where the rear of the vehicle was, or where the front of the vehicle was, rather I should say. And uh, yes, in fact, that's not the only tank that they've done that to turn them around and put the engine basically at the front to protect the crew it also balances the howitzer which is a heavy object okay it looks like he's gonna have another go at that in meal two okay it's a difficult job firing down that uh that on that ridge line oh he hit him hit somebody I suspect it wasn't the Emil that he actually hit, but he may have stunned him all the same. And the reason I say that is that uh, the object that was hit was much further down the ramp at the time. And although the Emil was backing up, I'm pretty sure it was the E75TS that he actually hit instead. Okay, he's going to try... Oh, there's the U... Object 252U. Goes back up to the north again because the Scorpion's coming to help out his teammates. And the Scorpion's got fairly light armor. And so's that SU-130PM. But he can't get a shot on him because he's hiding behind the rock. But he might be able to hit the Kunzpanzer. Dialed in. Runs out. And... Well, he pulled back just in time to avoid being penetrated. But 339 hit points is not bad. You know, we're losing tanks up in the north. We're seven down on the enemy now. The attack in the north faltered because, of course, they didn't get past the uh, bunch of tanks that are holding the other side of the pass. And uh, now we've only got one tank up there, the Progetto 46, being backed up by an object 430 behind him. Trying to get a shot on the SU-130 PM. Difficult because he's behind the rock. Can't see any more up there. Oh! There's the SU-100, 101 rubber. So you can pop, possibly pop that one in there. Rounds out. Well, that did hit for 331. And he's finding a new spot. This is not looking good, actually. Seven tanks down. Very difficult to come back from something like that. He's going to try and get the SU-101 if he can. Oh, no, no need to. But the Scorpions come through. Can he get a shot? Guy's moving fairly quickly. Rounds out. Oh, he hit him and he killed him. 468, he got the scorpion. Must have penned him. Did hit the side armor of the scorpions fairly weak, so the shell probably went straight through, wiped him out. So he's got his first kill, but unfortunately we're way down on hit points and with six kills under, or rather six tanks under now. He's managed to get just under 3k of damage so far, though. 
Lamps out the E75. So although Clicker is putting in a really good effort, a super unicum effort, I'm afraid his teammates are just falling like flies and it won't be long before he's all on his own. Yeah, enemies starting to turn up near our base. The Kunzpanz has managed to make his way through the dip and he's now sitting there on the other side of the rock. Meanwhile, we've got the Patriot coming in from the north. Dialing in, almost ready. Give it a go. Bounce out. Direct hit for 216 to hit the heavy armor on the front of the Patriot. Yeah, this is getting very, very difficult now. We're being hedged in. The Char Future gets wiped out by the Kunzpanzer. And that means he's the uh, the next enemy that we're likely to meet. Instead, he abandons that target and decides to aim at well, slightly north of there, trying to get the Patriot, I think. Our teammates seem to be holding back the enemy on the eastern, the, 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 the southern pass, rather. But we're not stopping these guys coming in. And we've just been spotted in the LT-432 fired around at us and we're out the game he did kill the uh, he did kill the su-130 pm before he died but it looks now as if this game's going to be over momentarily he got spotted at very long range by the lc432 we're now following the object 430 and oh there goes the vk3502 yep there's only one tank left on our team it's the Object 430. He's facing the Kunzpanzer and the Patriot at the same time now. And there you go, he's gone. So this one is a loss. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the third class tank of a clicker in the M53 M55. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 18 in this one. And he got a Gauze Medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points for his own vehicle and the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game as well. So let's have a look at team score and see where he is. Well, the highest damage was 4,837 hit points to Clicker. The next highest score was the Kunzpanzer who got 4,144. And after that, it was the Char Future 4 on the enemy team with 3,587. So he was the best player on his team, Clicker. But unfortunately, the enemy team had more than one good, uh, more than one good player. Let's have a look at the number of kills. And we see it's the Kunzpanzer managed to get four kills in that game. Uh, two kills went to Clicker, to the Caliban, and to the M53, M55, and LT432, and the SU-130PM on the enemy team. So the enemy team had more than a few good players. And when it came to base XP, it's the enemy team comes out on top with the LT432 getting 1,117, the Kunzpanzer getting 1,094, and the Char Future 4 getting 993, and we can see Clicker got 450, even though he got the high caliber. Let's have a look at detail. He fired 15 shots in that game, had uh, 20 rounds to start with, but uh, ended up with just five at the end. 10 direct hits on the enemy and two penetrations. Ah, so there must have been another penetration that I didn't see. Well, he definitely penetrated the scorpion as he was moving across that uh, gap. Yeah, that's fairly thin armor on that vehicle. And right at the end of the game, when he killed the SU-130PM, he penetrated him as well. Again, he's got no armor, so the shells are going to go straight through him like a knife through butter. Uh, 19 splashes on the enemy as well. 4,837 hit points of damage, of which um, all of it was at more than 300 meters. He received three hits, all penetrations, all tank rounds that hit him. Uh, directly the moment he was spotted yes he was fair game and they all piled in 10 enemy vehicles were damaged two were killed so there's your difference there um unfortunately of course he didn't get a confederate three thousand three hundred and forty three hit points of stun assist off 19 stuns he earned thirty one thousand five hundred and sixteen credits from that game three thousand seven hundred and twenty six for the achievements award that's for getting uh, a battle hero or a epic medal in a losing or drawn game in fact he got both he got a 
an epic medal which was the um, gauze and then the battle hero was the high caliber 52,863 credits all together and after resupply of ammunition, repairs and consumables, he still came away with a profit of 4,167 credits. 450 ASEX, uh, XP, 271 for the Achievements Award, took away 1,082 experience points altogether. Let's have a look at the armour profile for the M53, M55. Well, despite it being a pattern tank, They've actually taken a lot of the armor off. You can see here, impacted armor at the front of the vehicle is only 25.4 millimeters, and it's only giving you effective armor of 28 because I'm angling it slightly. Um, on the engine deck, you can see, well, again, it's only 12.7 millimeters thick. The same around the turret at the back and at the back of that one as well. So really, the armor on this vehicle is only to stop shell splinters and bullets. That's all. It's not designed to stop any tank round, so any vehicle that hits this tank with a tank round is more than likely going to get a pen straight away. So, uh, yeah, not so great on armour. Let's have a look at the modules. Here there's the module profile, and you can see straight away that because it's a tank in reverse, we've got the engine up front with the transmission in front of that. Two fuel tanks, one either side, so if you aim for the front of the vehicle, more than likely you're going to hit something that's going to cause it mechanical problems or start a fire. The driver is in the turret and he's got his own viewports right up top. So he's right at the front of the vehicle on the top. And uh, directly behind him we've got a gunner who's actually controlling the elevation of the, uh, uh, the gun. And behind him is a loader. And on the other side of the vehicle we can see that there's another gunner. That's the one who's controlling the azimuth I believe. And behind him is the tank commander. He's got the radio set. And uh, behind him is another loader. In fact, um, on both tanks, on both the M53 and the M55, there are racks of shells along uh, the sides of the vehicle where you can actually take the shells out and feed them into the breach. Now, um, there's more shells on the M53 than there is on the M55, uh, mainly because it's 18 shells. They're so much bigger that you can't stack as many in and I believe it's two-part ammunition as well because the actual shell is separate from the charge that actually fires it and uh, so they normally have a truck that's coming alongside the M53, M55 supplying all the extra um, powder and the shells that it needs in order to carry out its task. So you can see if you want to uh, get a, a casualty on this tank on this RT just aim either side of the main gun on the turret and you should hit somebody important. Probably better to actually aim on the left hand side because you'll get one of the gunners, the commander and the loader. Whereas on this side you'll either get the driver, the gunner or the loader. So either way you're going to slow this tank down if you can take the crew out. If you want to take one of these out with a big bang you aim for the back of the, uh, the turret and that's where the Amorax are. So there you go, that's the module placement on the M53, M55. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And of course, please do remember that every video you watch on this channel is helping to aid the refugees coming out of the Ukraine war. We're sending all the revenue to the Red Cross Ukraine appeal. So the more videos you watch, the more money we can send them. And thank you for watching this one.